because of an unexpected leak, we got a surprising early peak at Big Motion V11. And this week, I'm going to talk about why I'm excited about this wheel, and I bet that it is not for the reason you expect. Are you ready to talk about Emotion's secret EUC world dominating plan? Rodendro! If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and click on that bell icon to be notified of new episodes. And here I was, not really expecting any EUC news for at least another month since I figure all the new models won't be released till at least April or May. But here we are, the FCC have once again ruined the aspiration for another tech company for keeping their product launch under wrap. We got a whole lot more into Emotion's new wheel. Now there were some things that I kind of expected and it had been confirmed by this link, but there were also many things that I wasn't expecting. I knew this was going to be a faster wheel. What was unexpected was exactly how much faster and how far Emotion was willing to push at their previous boundary. By the way, I'm heading to Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn to visit a friend. And today, for a change of pace, I went back to riding my uh, Monster V3. I've been mainly using the uh, Emotion V11 since I'm still planning on doing a review for that wheel, but I figure it's time for me to get back on the horse with Gotway, just to remind myself what that 100 volt wheel really feels like. And I'm riding through Williamsburg, and if you're not familiar with New York City, this is actually a, a really interesting area because you have one of the hippest area with a lot of young artists and hipsters. Meanwhile, right next to it is one of the largest Hasidic Jewish neighborhood in the U.S. And it's kind of dead right now because it's Saturday, so they're all home, I think. And I've been doing a whole lot of riding on the V11 lately, and in some way, it's sort of the perfect wheel for casual urban uh, explorations. It's cushy, comfortable, with a decent range and top speed. It's so everything I can possibly ask for. And the key word there is casual, and if you follow social media, you probably notice that you don't see as many V11 here amongst the New York ridership, mostly because that it just doesn't satisfy by the high speed requirement and that is a demand that Emotion fully intend on addressing with the release of the V12. It'll be the first 100 volt wheel Emotion has ever released with a max speed of 70 km or 43.5 miles per hour. For comparison, the fastest electric unicycle right now, i.e. the veteran Sherman, beeps at about 45 miles per hour. Every single person I talk to that tells me that they know how to ride the beep also inevitably have some horrid crash story of how they cut out. If anyone cares about what I said, my advice would still be to take those warning beep as exactly what they are and not push for speed unless you're prepared to suffer the consequences. And the reason why I bring this up is that if you agree with me on the not writing the beat policy, then for all intents and purposes, the V12 is basically almost as fast as the veteran Sherman since that wheel starts to beat at around 45 miles per hour also. Actually, absolutely insane for me because just like a generation ago when Remotion released the V10F, their max speed was 25 miles an hour. And at the time, they thought that any speed above that would be extremely unsafe. And I still find it a little bit hard to believe, despite the leak, that Emotion has so fully committed to their push for higher performance. But of course, the reality is probably a little bit different. The other strength of the veteran Sherman is the size of its battery packs, and with 3200 watt hour to draw on, the packs will sag less and allow you to push the motor harder in higher discharge conditions, i.e. when you're trying to accelerate above 35 to 40 miles per hour. 
This was partly the reason why the Sherman felt like it had an endless well of power to draw on even at high speed and only with 1750 watt hour packs. Instead, my guess is that it will take the V12 a bit more time to get to its max speed. The other interesting piece of information that the leak brought forth was the tire size. Before this, my guess would have been like 18 or even 20 inch. Now the smaller diameter wheel does generally offer more torque and better acceleration than bigger wheels because of the shorter distance between motor and actual road surfaces. And that actually may be a way in which um, Emotion is able to squeeze out a little bit more performances despite the deficit with their battery size. But the one compromise that you have to accept with a smaller diameter wheel is a reduction in stability at higher speed. Something that I'd be very curious to see how the V12 stack up once I actually get to ride the wheel. The other rather polarizing thing about the V12 is of course how it looks. I personally find it refreshing that Emotion seems to be developing a consistent design direction along the line of the V11, the squarish and downward arching headlights and tail light cover, the thin and tall profile, and of course the hallmark folding trolley handle all contribute to a fresh but yet familiar look. One that is at the same time with a leaner and more aggressive posture as is appropriate for an electric unicycle focused primarily on speed. There is, get this, a color touchscreen up front on top, which I actually personally think is awesome. Yes, you can use the app on your phone to also change setting on your wheel, but I personally would much rather not having to drag up my phone each time that I need to change every single little thing on my wheel. And I know that there have been some skepticism in regards to waterproofing, mostly because of the experiences that everyone had with the uh, top-mounted LED screen um, on the veteran Sherman and the issue it had uh, early on during the production run. However, I'm almost certain that this is something that Emotion would have paid attention to uh, given their general tighter tolerances when it comes to design and engineering. The other thing I noticed was how high the case seems to sit relative to the axle. And there seemed to be accommodation made for easy dropout of the pedal hanger along with the hub motor and tire assembly via what I hope to be a power and control disconnect. That would be really nice since easier access for tire repair and swapping out tubes had been something we've all been asking for. Now the high battery position is slightly concerning. Usually when you carry the weight low, it helps with stability, especially at higher speed. And this was one of the strategy that the veteran Sherman used to help reinforce the remarkable stability of that wheel. Yes, there were complaints that the pedals were too low and prone to drag a bit, but I think it's a worthwhile trade-off when it comes to ride stability. The quad headlights look interesting, and I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate having the nice bright headlights and properly shaped being on the V11. Visibility is a huge safety concern riding at night, and Emotion have put the most amount of effort in improving their lighting, and I hope they will continue to do the same with the V12. The other thing that is a little bit hard to tell is size. 16 inch wheels had traditionally been more compact than its larger diameter brothers and based on the dimension as part of the specification that was leaked, it does seem like the V12 is going to be a slightly more compact wheel as compared to the V11. And that is actually the other interesting thing about this wheel, which is that with its release, it will now be the fastest 16 inch wheel on the market. The Gotway Nikola had previously held that distinction, but since the Nikola speed warning kick in at 38 miles per hour, trying to reach 44 on it is a mighty sketchy reach for anyone except for the lightest and most daring rider. But the V12, if how the V11 performed at speed is any indication, may not only be able to reach 44 miles per hour, it may actually be able to hold that speed. It's unbelievable how much this neighborhood, and I mean best I had changed, when I was hanging out with my friend, what, 15 years ago? This neighborhood used to be so scary, I'd be afraid of getting out of my car because of the packs of wild dogs that would roam the streets at the time. 
two hours later. What was it that we were saying before we were rudely interrupted by delicious steak and beer at my friend's barbecue? By the way, you want to see something really interesting? I think this used to be an armory of some sort, but basically it just looked like a big old castle dropped right in the middle of, uh, of a regular residential block here in Brooklyn. So the thing that I had really been very excited about is exactly what this uh, specification actually implied. For you see that a 16 inch wheel had traditionally been province of lower power, cheaper beginner wheels, almost as a stepping stone to basically working up to the more expensive, more powerful as well as faster 18 inch or even 20 inch uh, flagship wheel. Probably best exemplified by one of the best selling electric unicycle of the last generation, the Emotion V8. More importantly, by stepping down to a 16 inch wheel and squeezing much more performance and top speed into a smaller package, combined with their release of V11 last year, it creates a very interesting and aspirational opening on the top of their potential lineup list. With a more compact and zippy performance 16 inch wheel and a larger suspension general purpose 18 inch wheel in the middle, the only thing that would make sense on top at a 20 plus inch size would be an even faster and higher performance wheel, a true flagship V13. And the possibility are almost endless more batteries, more range, greater top speeds, a larger wheel size, all I think somewhat basic ask. What I'm also interested to see is the potential for integration of a next gen and higher speed oriented suspension system. For you see that so far of the few suspension wheel that we have seen, they had all either been oriented towards comfort like what the V11 suspension has been designed around are oriented towards off-road, which is the suspension system we see on the S18. What we haven't seen is a suspension system that is more tuned towards just flat out speed. And then I know I have myself point out that high speed suspension is something that none of the speed riders are actually asking for however i still think that is mainly because that none of the suspension solution we've seen so far is really tuned appropriately plus we just never had a convincing high speed suspension wheel so far yes the ex exists but let's be real the godway ex is not a true high speed wheel it beeps at 38 miles per hour and max out we're in the mid 40s it's mid-tier at most. If Emotion truly aspired to dominate the uh, EUC world, then a speed-tuned suspension V13 with a top speed that matches or even perhaps exceeding that of the veteran Sherman would make a very convincing argument. And I get that it's likely not going to be an easy solve since after all, Gotway has been stuck at this very limit of 48 to 50 miles per hour without being able to break that barrier as they have started to see that point of diminishing return where demands for increasing motor power is starting to translate to exponentially um, increases in both weight, size, and the price of, of all the components in the electric unicycle itself. By the way, here is Peter Luger. This is one of the best steakhouse. Looks like they're still quite busy. The 90 pound and almost $4,000 uh, Gotway Monster Pro is an excellent example of that. But that to me is an engineering problem that is solvable. And I hope that Emotion will be able to arrive at the solution that will really push the EUC world towards our next major leap in performance gain. By the way, I feel like this is one of those things that deserve its own video, i.e. what it would take for us to get a true 60 miles per hour wheel. Yes, that is the EUC holy grail right now. But before I wander too far off topic, getting back to the V12, I think it's a well-specified electric unicycle. Look at these guys. <laughs> the city is on party mode. Really interesting position 
based on the larger picture of the Emotion uh, EUC lined up. And I'm super excited to have a chance to actually ride this wheel, hopefully, before too long. As a matter of fact, the thing that's really killing me is that I know exactly where a V12 is located, not very far from right here. Since my friend Mick, aka EVX, has been sending a whole lot of teaser about his coming video review of this wheel. That's right, that is where Mick has his studio and also where a V12 is <laughs> right now. I need to come up with some sorry excuse for a surprise visit so I can stop by and be like, oh hi Mick, oh what is this strange contraption you have uh, sitting in the corner under a piece of uh, cloth? Can, can I take a peek? I know that contractually he's supposed to keep a lid on it. He's been very good about it. Emotion, don't you worry. But hopefully it's not going to be that much longer of a wait for the rest of us peons. <laughs> So what do you think about the V12? Do you like or hate the design? And do you think that a 40 miles per hour electric unicycle and those pesky New York City riders are going to finally get us banned? Well, that is what the comment section below are for. And you know what? Aha! I somehow managed to trick you into wasting another 15 minutes of your life, but I hope you enjoyed it. Shout out to my supporter on Patreon. Please check out the link in the video description below if you enjoy and like to support my work. And as always, as much as we all love electric unicycle, the only way for us to get better wheel is to grow as a community. So tell your friends, teach them how to ride and get them hooked. Until the next video, thank you.